Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the West. More specifically, we are in Burbank, California, and even more specifically than that, we're in front of the Bearded Ladies Mystic Museum. Now, coming out here to the Bearded Ladies Mystic Museum has become somewhat of a uh, yearly tradition when I come here to uh, Southern California to do all the uh, fun Southern California haunts and uh, theme park events. I always like to stop in at the uh, Mystic Museum because they do, um, they have kind of rotating exhibits. They change out and do all, uh, new exhibits all the time and usually by the time I get here in uh, during the Halloween season they have a, a new exhibit up that I have not seen before. Last year was here they did a exhibit on 90s slashers and uh, we have actually I guess jumped forward a decade because right now they are running an exhibit why to kills on uh, 2000 era slasher movies and they also have a satellite location down the road a little bit um, last time I was in town they had an exhibit um, on uh, toys they're gonna be a spooky creepy toy shop and um, that has just, within the last couple days has been updated to be an Evil Dead exhibit so I figured we check out the exhibit here at the uh, Bearded Ladies Mystic Museum and then maybe head down the road a little bit and check out the other exhibit so please follow me oh man things like this make me regret that I fly and didn't take my car I wish I could purchase for sale only 195 this is like a tabletop arcade game from the Lost Toys exhibit. Uh, doesn't look like it works, but uh, man, that would be a fun table to have. Dang it, definitely definitely couldn't fit that on the plane. Of course, before we head in, you always have to spin the wheel here. Let's see what we got. All right, this is gonna spin for a while. Let's see, oh, 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 what's it gonna stop on? Oh, well, lucky numbers. 1, 12, 5, 3, 8, 21. Okay, remind me to play the lottery uh, later later today. Do they have lottery in California? Surely they do. And look, staring out the window there is a 12 foot tall Home Depot skeleton. They actually were able to modify theirs to get it to fit indoors. I may need to, to, to figure out how they did this and uh, modify mine so he can be inside. And here we have a. Uh, Fortune Telling Machine Characters Unlimited, the company that makes Zoltar, says that this is the bearded lady, but apparently she is dressed up like Ghostface. So let's give uh, Ghostface some money there. Oh, look at that. Swinging his, swinging his trademark knife there. Got full of spooky items here. Got some spooky ghost candles. Some creepy skull candles. Oh yeah, look at this. Over here. And this mask here, I'm not sure where this is from, but it uh, reminds me of the uh, the goblins from Troll 2. I mean, it's just the green slime on his mouth. Some different fortune telling items. We've got some tarot cards there. Some Ouija boards. So yeah, there's like three sections to the gift shop here. This is more of like the occult section, and then they have an oddities shop in here. Yeah, different spooky items. You got the uh, slinky dog there. Oh, look at this clock. It has the devil, a little, little imp sitting on the moon. Oh, that's a nice badger there. $400, not a bad price for a badger, although I do, I do own a badger already. I'm a big fan of these old school Halloween masks. Those are pretty amazing. Oh, real skeleton there. That is uh, pretty spooky there. It says fragile, please not touch. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to break someone's skeleton. I do like all these colorful anatomical sculptures here. Some spines, some skulls, and a giant ear. Hello, hello? Yeah, there are a lot of skeletons in here. Look at look at that look at that skeleton. This over here is like a CPR head that you would practice on. And down here we have a a high, a high intensity fox fight. Wow, chaos reigns. 
We have another uh, fortune telling machine here. Look at this. We got uh, is that Billy from uh, from Saw, the little doll there. I guess we got to give uh, give Billy some cash. Oh my gosh. Oh, very creepy. Oh wow, this is a fascinating uh, skeleton right there. What kind of skeleton is that? I mean, obviously that's not like a real skeleton taken out of someone's body, but very fascinating design. All right, and then the third section of the museum is Camp Horror, where they uh, kind of have a horror-themed gift shop. Who is this guy? Does anyone know what, uh, what horror movie this guy's from? Leave a comment in the comment section. There is a Graboid from Tremors here in, uh, in the gift shop. You can actually take, take this home for $5,000. Have your own uh, Graboid. Have some of their merchandise for their different exhibits here, including Slashback Video. And this is the one I've never, never been able to catch. They do a vintage uh, video store at their other location. And I think they've had it two or three times, but I've never been in California at the right time to catch it. Oh, this is the outhouse here at uh, Camp Horror, but what's going on in here? Oh, okay. What's that? Oh, look at this terrifying face on this woman here. Jeez. And here's the for sale section. I guess these were all parts of the Lost Toys exhibit. Um, and you can actually purchase them now. They're selling off the Lost Toys exhibit, but they're also selling off this, which was one of the centerpieces of the Lost Toys exhibit, the giant My Pet Monster. It's $3,800. I might consider selling my house so I can buy this. <laughs> Behind the desk here, we have uh, one of the Martians from Mars Attacks. And this is like an old vintage toy where you can like make your own monster, like a like a morbid Mr. Potato Head. And here is the Candyman. See, he's got his uh, his bees pouring out of his mouth. No, not the bees. He was covered in bees before Nicolas Cage ever said, "No, not the bees." All right, so we have this DVD here. So this supposedly activates things inside the uh, Y2 Kills uh, exhibit. Just hold on to the edge and put the orange sticker in like this. Okay. You just pull it right back out and it'll activate your experience. Oh, okay. So it activates the scene over here. Make sure we don't drop any sales. All right, we are headed in. Come on in. Come on in. So here we gotta activate the first exhibit here with the DVD. going on. Pure chaos occurring in here. It's happening. Oh, there we go. Letting us in here. Where are we? Which, which kitchen is this? All right, only one way to find out whose kitchen this is. We use our DVD there, or CD-ROM. Oh, the computers. The computer's on fire. Oh, the whole kitchen is on fire. What the heck? <laughs> What's happening? Oh my goodness. Singing Rocky Mountain High. Oh no! Exploded open. Okay, I, I think I think I get it. This is a, a final destination, right? Final destination, where things just uh, where you just you, you and the whole world's trying to kill you. You're just you're cursed with death. This room here, just like dripping down the side. Oh my gosh! You can see someone being dunked. It's like being dunked in wax. There is this. Uh, is this House of Wax starring uh, starring Paris Hilton? Is that? I, I don't know if that's Paris Hilton or not. But uh, someone is being dunked 
in the wax there. And once again, we have our, uh, our DVD here to, to activate the scene. Oh, jeez. Causes the, the waxy corpse to <laughs> flop around. <laughs> we got some fun props over here, some screen use props. This is a miniature of a school bus. This was used in the movie Trick or Treat. It came out in 2007 during the school bus massacre scene. That's pretty cool. Oh, we got some smaller things here. We got, uh, what was that, a candy bar with a razor blade in it. And uh, there is a, uh, a lollipop there from, uh, from Trick or Treat. Here we have a separate head used in the film Trick or Treat. That's one thing I'm gonna have to go back and watch. I know that is a, a pretty fun uh, horror movie, but uh, it's been a little while since I've seen it. Here is the uh, the head of uh, Eli Roth, the director of Hostel, one of the uh, creators of uh, of the, the genre of torture movies that became popular in the uh, early 2000s. And here he has his head severed. Yeah, over here we have uh, Patrick Bateman's apartment from American Psycho that says, I have to return some videotapes, which is code he would use in case he was going to murder someone. Here's some uh, business cards. You know, the different, the different colors of white there. Of course, uh, Patrick Bateman was so jealous over someone else's business card that he, he murdered them. Here are some of Patrick Bateman's murder tools. Got the axe, the axe there. Is this a, a bolt gun? A bolt gun used by Patrick Bateman. Oh, and here we have a, uh, a rain jacket. I guess to avoid getting the blood splattered on him. Look at me, I'm Patrick Bateman. And here we have uh, Mr. Jason Voorhees. I guess Jason Voorhees, a long lasting horror villain uh, he, uh, he kind of extends generation to generation. Every generation has their own Friday the 13th uh, movie. I guess this one's from uh, Freddy vs. Jason. There he is holding uh, Freddy Krueger's head as he would sever Freddy's head at the end of the movie. But Freddy gave a wink showing us that he was still alive. You can see Freddy's arm poking over the bench here. Then we got uh, Jason's trademark Machete, so machete versus glove hand. Who wins? Okay, this is from uh, 13, 13 Ghosts, which I actually went back and watched a few years ago. It is actually a really fun movie. Just like the, the design, the, uh, the, the, the design of the ghosts, the monsters in the movie was pretty fun, even though I, I remember not liking it the first time I saw it. But uh, I think we can activate this one with our, uh, with our DVD there. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. It's gonna do something. Something's gonna happen. Singing a, singing a song there. Oh, there we go. There we go. What is it? I think it's the Jackal is the name of this, of this ghost there. The Jackal. This happy scarecrow inviting us to continue through the corn. And uh, what is, what is this? This woman dangling in the water? Am I thinking, is this, I'm not 100% on this, is this the, uh, the, the ring? The ring maybe? Uh, other than that, I'm coming up blank. I'm not sure. The woman, there's water. Is it the ring? Or is it something else? If anyone knows what else this could be, leave a comment in the comment section. All right, see the woman there with the uh, lollipop stuck in her mouth. That's gonna be one thing. Trick or treat. <laughs> Saw some of the uh, some of the uh, props earlier. I guess that is, uh, that is Sam. He is the, uh, the main villain from Trick or Treat, but it's actually like an anthology movie where I think everything kind of ties in together at uh, the end. I notice here in the mailbox, we've got, uh, Got a uh, player. Okay, what's gonna happen here? Oh, something's going on. 
They're fighting in the window, in the window there. What's happening? Oh, there we go. See him above the window. Right there. What's asking for help? There through the window. Here we have a giant towering Sam, a larger than life Sam, you know, with his creepy button eyes and the sack over his head. All right, let's see what our final room is here. Oh, I talked about the, uh, the, uh, the, the torture, the torture uh, type of, uh, of horror movies. I think this is uh, yeah, it's a scene from Hostel where they would tie, someone be tied to a chair and then the, the movie would just graphically show them uh, being uh, mutilated, dismembered, have a wrench, you could pull out their teeth, their nose, maybe their eyeballs. All sorts of uh, horrible things you can do to people while they're uh, strapped in a chair. And here we have Game Over. The, uh, we end with, with Saw here. There is, uh, I think Billy, the little little puppet that uh, that that announces the games, he's on his uh, his tricycle there. See, just a horrible scene has unfolded here. Oh yeah, that toilet's super gross. That's pretty gross. Too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh wait, he's moving. He's moving. Eh? He's slowly. Rolling out. <laughs> Spooky. Alright, we exit back into the Mystic Museum. Alright, so that was the Y2 Kills exhibit here at the Mystic Museum. And now we gotta head down the street just a few blocks to check out their brand new Evil Dead exhibit. And here it is, this has only been open for a couple days now. The uh, Evil Dead exhibit here at the uh, Mystic Museum, kind of their satellite location here. And there you have the, the inflatable uh, woman being pulled into her grave by the Deadite hand. Oh, watch your feet. That Deadite's popping up out of the ground. So I actually am a fan of the Evil Dead, uh, Evil Dead movies. They, um, I, I, I've talked about this before, where I really like, like, I use the, the original Halloween movie as an example. It's not a lot of blood, not a lot of violence, more setting the mood, using darkness, hinting at things, building anticipation, and I feel like you take a complete 180 from that is what you have uh, Evil Dead movies. There's no build up, no anticipation, it's just crazy special effects, crazy screaming monsters, it just a, it just a, a mile a minute scares. It's just like, you, don't even, you can't even like recover or, or, or build up to any anticipation just because it's bombarding you with spookiness, with scares, with horrific things, which I think works in, in a way. I think those are like the two opposite horror movies. And uh, of course, I remember the first one I ever saw was actually the third movie, Army of Darkness, which is a little different. It's more of a action adventure. Uh, movie set in medieval times where the hero uh, Ash goes back in time and, and, and battles the Deadites. Like almost like a complete, um, complete uh, different type of movie, but it's also also a lot of fun. Um, I saw the most recent uh, Evil Dead movie recently. It was Evil Dead Rise, and it um, follows kind of a similar storyline as, as the original movies where uh, they find the Necronomicon and it, and it brings about evil spirits um, but at this time it's like a family the mom gets possessed and then slowly different members of the family get possessed by the evil spirit um, and it's fine but it just really I don't know I just associate the Evil Dead movie so strongly with the character of uh, of Ash 
to me. Like, if that, that he kind of makes the movie. That's kind of like having Friday the 13th without Jason. Uh, even though he's not the monster, he's, he's more of the hero. So it, it just kind of, I don't know. I, I think the movie would have been probably a good movie if it had a different name. And it's still probably a pretty good movie, but I just, I, I, I felt like Ash's presence was, was missing. It's really hard to do an Evil Dead movie and not, uh, not oh, there he is right there. And it's not include, <laughs> not include, uh, not include Ash. But yeah, there's a, the movie was like super, super gory, super bloody. Did the uh, Halloween Horror Nights version of that. So got a little immersed in, uh, in Evil Dead Rise. But uh, yeah, let's, let's check this out. Hello? Hello. So the general admission ticket, that's this guy here, that gives you access to the photo ops to uh, the exhibit showing the props from the movies. I'm gonna hand that back to you. That's what you paid for. Okay. To unlock the immersion of the exhibit, oh, no. an additional key. You have to get that Necronomicon key. That is eight dollars. Yeah, I think I'll fork out I'll fork out the eight dollars for the, okay. the Necronomicon key. Absolutely. <laughs> if you know anything about the franchise, you know there's some weird stuff going down in that cell. Absolutely. Steer clear of that cellar door. Okay, stay clear of the cellar door. Absolutely. So, right here, if you want to activate, then take All the right. link to the beep hole there, and that'll get the whole thing started. All right, put our key in there, and then look through the keyhole. Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. There we go. Have fun, don't All die. Right. I will try. Try not to say anything in Latin either. In there, don't say anything in Latin. All right, we have this car here. It says it was the woods themselves. I guess we can get behind the, uh, the driver's seat here of the car. Let's see, okay, we have a, a keyhole here so we can. Oh, look at that. That smoke rising in the front of the car there. Case of Necronomicons in here. Here's a screen used Necronomicon. This is the stunt Necronomicon here. I guess that's one that they could like throw around without having to worry about damaging it. Yeah, so many Necronomicons. That one's got like a portal in the center. And we have an altar here. The Necronomicon here. We can activate the altar with our key to go find the keyhole. All right, here is the keyhole here. Uh-oh, the incantations there. Here, the uh, the deadite there. One of his one of Ash's friends turned into a deadite. I this is one of the things I always remember about this movie is the deer, the the, the evil deer head becomes possessed, and uh, yeah, look at that giant face there coming out of the wall. But uh, yeah, there's a, a trap door in the floor. I think uh, I have an idea what that might mean. So let's put the you there. Oh, there we go. Deadite trap there in the basement. Got some props in here. These are original rolls of a uh, of film when the movie's on. Kind of interesting thing of a day when you know you could have the original physical roll of film, and then some uh, some boomsticks here. This is uh, Ash's screen-used boomstick right there. It's pretty amazing. Right, we got the. Uh, 
table here with the recording and uh, yes, okay. The keyhole over here. Oh, there we go. Playing recordings about the about the Necronomicon. It's a screen used head there. It says Evil Ed, one of uh, Ash's friends that was turned evil through the power of the Necronomicon. And down here, there's the screen used chainsaws. Of course, the, uh, the, the boomstick and the chainsaw, Ash's uh, trademark weapons and they actually had his arm his hand cut off and replaced it with a chainsaw which is a, just an amazing concept and then in uh, the sequel army of darkness he replaced his uh, his uh, chainsaw hand with a mechanical gauntlet hand this is actually the screen used gauntlet from army of darkness which is just pretty Pretty amazing. I always remember being disappointed in the movie when I'm like, oh, well now he doesn't have a chainsaw for a hand. That's <laughs> disappointing. But uh, this is, oh, this is actually the screen used bandage stump there. See, it's just like made out of like cardboard and duct tape. And there's Ash, the uh, greatest horror movie hero of all time, holding his boomstick up high. He's got his chainsaw for an arm. Over here, this is from the newest movie, Evil Dead Rise. They had an elevator scene where the elevator just filled completely up with blood. I think the movie actually set a record for the most fake screen, screen blood used. So let's see if we step into the elevator here and insert our key. Oh no, oh, look at that, his hands. Moving hands up there, and electricity. Oh my gosh, look at that electricity there. as if you were a part of the VHS cover here, that iconic uh, hand coming out and grabbing, grabbing a woman by the neck. In here they have their seance room as you can see uh, have some evil dead props back here we have uh, Ash's screen used outfit it's pretty amazing it says here this piano is a witch's altar here and a statue of Baphomet up here we have a uh, Helmet was used in Army of Darkness. This is the helmet that Evil Ash wore, the main villain of uh, Army of Darkness. We have some of the original scripts from uh, from Evil Dead right there. If we look up, there's all these Ouija boards here on the wall. And I remember the first time I came to the Mystic Museum, their special exhibit was on talking boards, Ouija boards, and other ways of communicating with the undead. Just a, just a couple of creepy dolls hanging out on a couch here in the seance room. This cabinet here, different planchettes. These are the items you use to move around. A Ouija board to communicate with spirits. And then I guess these teacups would be for like reading tea leaves and other, uh, you know, other types of things used to predict the future, communicate with the dead. Different fortune telling cards up here. Look at that. 
creepy witch over here in the corner. They have lots of screen used Necronomicons in here. I actually have I, my my I have a screen used Necronomicon in my collection, but it's not from the Evil Dead. It's from uh, it's from the show. Your pretty face is going to hell. Here's some uh, props from the most recent movie, Evil Dead Rise. This is the Deadite Ellie bust. That's the mom that becomes possessed and turns on her family. This is. Uh, Caleb's severed head. I forget who Caleb was, but apparently got his head cut off. Okay, this must be the Necronomicon from the uh, most recent movie. It actually has teeth that uh, close. I think it actually bit one of the kids. There's like an animatronic torso there. It says this is Linda's effects torso. So I guess it has like tubes and things to make it move and make horrible, horrible things happen to it. There's Linda's severed head from Evil Dead 2. They have it clamped in a vise there. Up here we see a uh, Fiji mermaid. Huge fan of the Fiji mermaids. I always love to see a Fiji mermaid included. Beautiful albino caribou there, as well as some sort of mummy back here. There's another screen used. Outfit. This one's from Evil Dead Rise. This is Ellie's the the mom. See her blood and and guts showing there. We exit here through the giant Necronomicon. Wait a minute. As I was leaving, I noticed this. Tired of humans? Call the exterminators. This is from uh this is from Halloween Horror Nights. They have phone numbers, phone numbers here. Let's see what happens when we call, call this number. Are you tired of humans? Are you sick of being stepped on, squashed, swatted, and sprayed? Did you know insects outnumber humans on this planet a billion to one? It's Larry Larva. A little bit of a uh, little bit of viral marketing for Halloween Horror Nights. So always a lot of fun coming out here to the uh, Mystic Museum out here in uh, Burbank, California. I love stopping by uh, every year or so when they have their their new exhibits. Managed to catch the the, the two new exhibits that I had not seen before, and uh, always have a good time here. Uh, curious to see maybe when next year what next year will bring what the future will bring if there will be a new exhibit uh, at the Mystic Museum next year. And at one one, some point I do want to catch a slashback video. They, they, they turn the, uh, the Evil Dead, where we saw the Evil Dead, they turn that into a, uh, into a vintage video store every so often. I've managed to miss it every time somehow because, you know, because I live on the East Coast and it's not, I can't just jump over here to the West Coast. It takes a few days drive or a uh, airplane ride to uh to get out here but uh if you guys enjoy it of course more much much more spooky halloween stuff to come up in uh in the following days and weeks here during the spooky season uh thank you guys so much for following along with these videos if you do uh, if you do like these uh, videos please subscribe i travel around the country i film roadside attractions amusement parks museums haunted houses and other fun random stuff if uh you want to support help support the channel consider contributing to patreon three dollars or more we'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you also selling enamel pins in the etsy shop and doing personalized messages on cameo birthdays anniversaries anything you'd like really and uh, if you're interested in that, check out the description of this video. Of course, all that goes to help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.